Hi there, everybody. Professor Tomney here, back with another Chem Complete lecture. And in today's lecture, we are going to take a look at how to determine the pH of a weak acidic solution based on the initial concentrations that are given in a problem. So that is coming up on the channel right now. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to go ahead and start tackling weak acids. So if you saw the video in the series before this, we were taking a look at how to calculate pH using negative logarithms. So because we're going to be calculating pH of this weak acid, it is important that you know how to do that. So if you haven't done that yet, or you don't know how to calculate pH using the negative log technique, make sure that you go back and watch that video or you inform yourself somehow before you're proceeding forward with this, because it will be part of this problem. Okay, so what is the pH of a 0 0.050 molarity HF solution? So the key here is that if you were to take a look at the hydrofluoric acid, it is not one of the six strong acids on our strong acid base list. So because of that, we're going to proceed forward assuming it's weak. And that means that if I were to use hydrofluoric acid, and I were to put it in an aqueous environment, it's going to be in equilibrium. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put the HF in an aqueous environment. That means that it's going to have water around. Now the water we would represent as a liquid. And remember that when we are doing equilibrium problems, liquids do not appear in the equilibrium expression. Solids and liquids are left out of that. So what would that create? Well, it's going to create H3O plus, and it will also create the conjugate base, which would be F minus. Right, so that's our conjugate base there. Okay, so now that I have this, the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to set up an ice chart or an ice equation. Okay, so ice standing for initial concentration, the change in concentration, and then finally you're going to have your equilibrium state. Okay, so again, if you're not familiar with that, that is something that's required for this. So go check out some equilibrium lectures if you're not sure what I'm uh, referring to here. Okay, so You've got I, C, and E. Now, based on this problem, we can say that the initial concentration of the HF is 0 0.050 molarity. Right? We're going to ignore the water because that's not going to contribute. And then at the initial point, at the very beginning, right as this acid is introduced to the water, these would be zero. I would not expect any concentration on either of these until the equilibrium has begun to, you know, proceed forward. So the change here would then be that I'm going to lose some amount X, and I should mention this is a balanced equation. So if, the, if this was not a balanced equation, you would need to go through and balance it before you're proceeding forward here. Okay. So I'm going to lose some amount x and then I would gain some amount x here and I would gain some amount x here as this dissociates into the two representative parts. The H here, right, can be represented as H3O plus as it couples to the water. And so we have plus x and plus x here. So at equilibrium, I'm going to have 0 0.050 minus x. There would be no value associated with the H2O. And then for the H3O plus and the F minus, I would have simply X and X. Okay. Now, something that you want to avoid here, because a lot of students will see this problem and make this mistake, is that they see the concentration in the problem. They don't realize that we're not talking about a strong acid, so 100% of it won't dissociate here. And they just proceed forward to say, okay, so just take the negative log of 0 0.050 and we should be good to get the pH, and that will not work. You cannot do that because, again, you're not going to get this acid to fully dissociate into the right-hand side of this equation. If it did, that would be more acceptable provided it was a one-to-one -one ratio as far as the acidic proton to the initial acid. Okay, so from here, we need to set up the actual 
uh, equilibrium expression. Now for this you're going to need the Ka. So this would be something that would have to be given in the problem or you would need to go reference it from a table. So a lot of uh, books have these tables for acids or for other equilibrium constants. Now the Ka for this particular acid is 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so if that's the Ka, we can set that equal to the expression. Now, what's the expression going to be here? Well, it's products over reactants. So products, I'm going to get x squared because it's x times x, right? If I take a look at H3O plus, the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of F minus, well, if both of these are x, then it's x times x that's up there. So that's going to become x squared. Now, if I proceed forward with the denominator, it's going to be whatever I have for the reactant side. So in this case, I'm going to have 0 0.050 minus x. Okay, now from here, we're going to need to solve for x, and we have an x squared and an x value. Um, some people know of the technique where you can drop this x or assume that it's small, provided it passes the what we call the 5% rule. In this case, I can tell you right now, this would not pass the 5% rule. So we're going to go through this properly with the quadratic equation. But I always encourage students to check that um, to see if it is possible. But I'm letting you know up front that this would not meet that criteria uh, for this particular problem. So we're going to do this classically, if you will, with the quadratic equation. Okay, so what I need to do then is I'm going to need to isolate all of this on one side of the equation in order to get a equation set equal to zero so that I can use the quadratic equation. So I would encourage you to take a minute, pause the video, and see if you can do that. Can you isolate all of this to one side of the equation, set it equal to zero, so that you get your A, B, and C for the quadratic equation? So give that a try. Um, and unpause the video whether you need me to help walk through it or whether you feel that you're done and you want to check your answer, okay? All right, so if we take a look here, okay, setting this up, the first thing I would do is I would take this chunk in the denominator and bring it up to the other side, right? So I would end up with 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. And I would multiply that times, and if you keep seeing me look off screen, I'm just checking my notes here. Okay, this minus x, and that is equal to x squared. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do then is I would distribute this. The 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth, I'm going to distribute that to this, and then I'm also going to distribute that value to the negative x. And so if I do that, I'm going to end up with 3.6 times 10 to the negative fifth minus 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth x. You don't want to forget that x is there. Okay, equals x squared. So now I'm getting close. If I isolate all of this to one side, then I can say that x squared plus Okay, because this is minus over here, so I'm going to add it over to the other side. x squared plus 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth x. And then I'm going to need to subtract this one, so it would be minus 3.6 times 10 to the negative fifth equals 0. Okay, so as far as the quadratic equation is concerned, you've got a you've got B, and you've got C. Now, A here is an implied 1 that is coming before this x squared. So keep that in mind, okay? So when we go to the quadratic equation, A will be 1. When we get to B, uh, B in the quadratic equation, it would be a positive 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then when we get to C, it would be a negative 3.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, so your next goal, I would encourage you again to pause this, use those values, 
and plug them into the quadratic equation. So you should get two answers that come out. One of them will be legitimate and the other one will not. And the key here to keep in mind is we are talking about values of X and X is going to represent concentration or molarity. So that means a couple of things. It can't be bigger than the initial concentration or molarity. It also cannot be a negative value, right? X is going to have certain parameters and limitations, and that will tell us which one we want to go for in this case. So try the quadratic equation out, and then unpause the video when you're ready for the walkthrough on that part. Okay, so as a reminder for people, okay, you should have had this, but just so we're clear, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and this is going to be over 2a. That is your quadratic equation. Okay. Now, if I plug the correct values in here, I'm going to start with x is going to equal negative b, so negative 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth, okay? And then plus or minus the square root of b squared, so let's take that same value, 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. We're gonna square that value, right? Minus four, a is one, c is negative 3.6, times 10 to the negative fifth. And then this is all going to be over two, and it's two a, so it's two times one in this case, which is two, okay? So if you reduce that down or you solve for that, what you should end up with, okay, kind of showing you a, a bit of a reduced form here is negative 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth, plus or minus, and what I have here when I worked it out was 0 0.012, okay, and that's gonna be over two. So that means that X can be the following values. X can be 5.6 times 10 to the negative third, and X can be negative 6.4 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, so which one of these is not appropriate? Well, negative, okay? We do not use negative values for molarity. So that means the correct value that I must utilize here is the 5.6 times 10 to the negative third, okay? That is my correct value. Now, that is x, so X represents what? Well, if I come back up here, X represents H3O plus at equilibrium, right? So what is the pH of this solution? Well, it's going to be the H3O plus concentration, which is synonymous with H plus. It represents the acidity. And I need to take the negative log of that value, right? So let's highlight this in red because this is kind of our final answer coming up here, right? So what I need to do is I need to take the negative log of my x value. And we just said that x would be 5.6 times 10 to the negative, oops, 10 to the negative third, right? So what does that value equal? Well, if I put it in to my calculator, you should get 2.25. So there you go. That is the pH of this solution okay so these problems take a lot more effort when you're doing the weak acids than when you're doing strong acids where they fully dissociate right if this just said hcl well the hcl fully dissociates 100 percent into the h3o plus and so i can just assume that the concentration of the hcl will also be the concentration of the h3o plus i just take the negative log of that and i'm done right the equilibrium requires a lot more setup and dedication in terms of the mathematics that you have to work through okay so that's how you would properly deal with a weak acid provided that you have its ka and you have the initial concentration so head on over to chemcomplete.com for free resources as well as guides that we sell if you're struggling with any subject we've got guides that can help you 
They are very affordable, only a couple dollars, and it's an awesome way to help support the channel. Subscribe to stay up to date. That also helps support us. Dropping a like if you felt this was useful. And as always, thank you so much for using ChemComplete as your organic chemistry and general chemistry learning resource. And I will see you guys in the next lecture.